His so the, the predictions okay which could be verified during Einstein's tenure or say tenure in this world were these minutely observable things gravitational redshift, bending of light around heavy masses, precession of the perihelion of Mercury, okay, uh, the innermost planet of the of the solar system, namely say uh, uh, Mercury won't complete. See it just processes like this uh, with some 20, uh, 40, 40 seconds of arc per century or something. Anyway, I, I won't have more comments on this. This thing, bending of light around heavy masses, okay, that is immediately, qualitatively, one can understand it right from here, sp since space is curved, okay, you, you can have, you can expect, say, the natural so-called I will call it geodesic, okay, will be a curved path, not a straight line. Okay, I will have some, some digression on this about the so-called Hamilton's principle in classical mechanics. Because to, to explain this properly. You know that this is the most important point where the entire structure of classical mechanics is hinged. It, the, the entire classical mechanics will follow from this. Say any particle will follow that path which minimizes or extremizes the time integral of the Lagrangian. It's something like say Lagrangian in layman's terms is the difference between kinetic energy and potential energy. Even though kinetic energy lost its potential energy gained or vice versa, say in nature's economy program, it so happens that there is as much coherence or I mean there is kinetic energy and potential energy are more or less equal. That is the happiest situation. That is the layman's explanation of this thing. Even though kinetic energy lost its potential energy gain, but energy, I mean, nature won't allow it that way. Even though once something lost its gain somewhere else, that loss should be minimized. There should be as much equality between kinetic energy and potential energy. In other words, that amounts to the minimization of the action in the Lagrangian, okay, LDT, okay, between 1 and 2, okay, this is the famous Hamilton's principle or principle of least action. Then it so happens that, see, for, for a free particle in relativistic mechanics, one can easily show that for a free particle, particle, this Lagrangian happens to be minus m0 c square, square root of, 1 minus v square by c square. This is the Lagrangian. So, one can, in fact, those who are interested can work it out leisurely at home because of the shortage of time. I want, uh, I can show that this implies that delta of for a free particle the space-time interval, see, see, Hamilton's principle or principle of least action, one can show amounts to extremization of path in four-dimensional space. Again, one can show, the only thing is, I have shortage of time, that's why you won't derive this, you can do early. Any book on classical mechanics or, or on relativity will tell you, it's a simple step. This again amounts to delta of okay Fermat's principle of least time. Okay, A, see the actual motion of the particle is characterized by 
an extremum, usually minimum of the time integral of the Lagrangian for a free particle that can be shown to be, see, the extremization of the proper time, okay. That is proper time is in relativistic jargon, it is a time measured in a frame of reference in which the particle is at the rest, okay. You know the time in special relativity you have, T equal to tau by square root of, this is called dilatation of time. So that t into square root of 1 minus v square by c square is tau, proper time, that is proper, either tau or t naught, whatever you can call it, okay. So, okay. Now this is in flat space because the particle is free. Now tell me, if the particle is not free, in mechanics what we do, what do we do? We introduce potentials. If I introduce a potential, that means particle is no more free, there is a force. In relativity, see, potentials or fields are just, I mean, they are no more there, they are converted into geometry. So you have, if the particle is not free, the relativistic answer is, space is no more flat, space is curved. So that, say, this thing, th that is, instead of, remember, the equation for, for example, x alpha, x alpha equal to 0, this is a light-like, uh, say, situation we have seen, null, null vector, okay. Now, in curved space, this goes to, remember, as I told you, g mu nu, okay, x mu, x nu. This is a null vector. This means, as I told you, x square plus y square plus z square minus c square t square. Or dx square plus dy square plus dz square minus t square dt square. That is dx alpha, dx alpha, okay, equal to 0. Instead of that, in say, as we have seen earlier in curved space, you have g mu nu, okay, say x mu, x nu, okay, this tells you about the propagation of, say, light in curved space, okay, because in, see, this becomes this in the special case of flat space where this becomes a square matrix with uh, g 0, 0 equal to minus 1, g 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3 are all equal to 1, all the others 0. So that gets uh, complicated like this. This is called a null geodesic. Null means, see, here it is zero. Okay? If, see, this is for light. If it is not light, if it is some other particle, this is non-zero, that's all. In other words, the particle, see, the part of the particle which minimizes the time integral of the Lagrangian is the prototype of the so-called geodesic. See, the path which minimizes the time integral of the Lagrangian in curved space, that is the actual path of the particle, it is called geodesic, okay. Principle of the path of least proper time, the path of least space-time interval in curved space-time or the path of least so-called time integral of the Lagrangian. Okay, so this is, this defines the geodesic. In general, the geodesic is defined as, shall I write here? Geodesic. minimizes the time integral of the Lagrangian in curved space. Suppose there is no, no extra, no mass 
so there is no curvature space becomes flat so this becomes the usual say for light it becomes say free i mean so i mean straight light etc so this is the general case it is called geodesic okay it is also it minimizes the time integral of the lagrangian or it minimizes the so called extremum i mean uh, sorry the the minimizes the proper time of the particle okay see it, it the meaning is so simple in the presence of acute masses okay the path followed by a particle that's the geodesic the path followed by the particle is that which extremizes okay in fact minimizes the time integral of the lagrangian or the proper time of the particle proper time is time measured in a frame of reference in which the particle is at rest or it minimizes the the so called space time interval space time interval for light is zero okay for other actual say it's quite clear see the Lagra because for light what happens is see this m zero rest mass is zero so the lagrangian for light is zero so all those things for light the whole thing will just become zero for other particles it will be non zero all the same see the actual path traversed by a particle in curved space is that thing which extremizes the time integral of the lagrangian or extremizes the proper time that is called the geodesic see so you have geodesic equations okay which should not be confused with einstein field equations see i will give you an example maxwell's equations govern the propagation of electromagnetic field they are field equations but in an electromagnetic field suppose i give you a charged particle which moves with the velocity v what's the equation of motion for that particle i will write see f equal to in an electromagnetic field a charge q experience a force this is called lorentz force equation see this is a this is the equation followed by a particle under the influence of the electromagnetic field this is not an equation of electrodynamics mind you It's an equation of mechanics even though it involves electric and magnetic fields okay while einstein's field equation is an equation of this is the fundamental equation r mu nu the field equation tells you about the space time propagation of the gravitational field both are different you ask the question how is gravitational field produced okay in relativity the answer is mass curves space time and that is given by this okay so that is the field equation the fundamental equation of general theory of relativity while see the geodesic equation the e is the equation obeyed by a particle when it is in that gravitational field it is a very terrific gravitational field which really warps space time but it is not this field equation so there are two types of equations the einstein's field equation which is a fundamental one and the other thing is that tells you about the equation of motion of the particle that stems from the the so called principle of least action any actual any particle just uh, say uh, economizes its action integral or its proper time it's a particle equation it's not a field equation that is called geodesic equation and again in curved space quite like this that also is terribly complicated i will just quote it that the form of the equation will be something like this ah usually you know in, in mathematically it can be either plus or minus but i i mean maximum or minimum but physically it is a minimum okay that is why books say extremum i mean it, it extremizes then bracket they say usually it minimizes okay 
see the geodesic equation will be like this See, it's something like acceleration, is not it, the, on the face of it. d square x by dt square, if, you, if I code it is acceleration. This is d square x alpha by d tau square by a twice proper time equal to minus alpha beta gamma dx beta by d tau into dx gamma by well, the derivation is pretty complicated, I don't know, okay. This is called geodesic equation. Because it is the equation which governs the motion of the particle in a given gravitational field. The gravitational field is, say, it is that metric field, okay, which is uh, created by this thing. This, this mass concentration. In fact, I will have one more word of comment here which I forgot to mention at that time. I told you this is energy momentum tensor. That word is a bit of a misnomer because energy, you know that in relativity, momentum and energy form a four vector in special relativity. As I told you, they Lorentz transform. Energy is fourth component of momentum. Okay. So, see, Energy momentum together is a four vector, a vector in four dimensional space. Then what is the gradient of that? Gradient of a vector, sorry, gradient of a scalar is a vector as you know, del phi. It's phi scalar, del phi is a vector. If I ask the question, what is the gradient of a vector? Gradient of a vector belongs to a more complicated entity, it's a second rank tensor. Gradient of a second rank tensor is a third rank tensor. Okay, it's just like 3 by 5 is more complicated than 3. 3 is an integer, 5 is an integer, but 3 by 5 is a more complicated, it's a fraction. Always the, the gradient plays the role of a division in, a, in the way of calculus. So, gradient of uh, say energy momentum is a 4 vector. Its gradient in 4 dimensional space is a, is a 4 dimensional, I mean it's a he says tensor in four dimensions. It, it is usually, it is called energy momentum tensor. Uh, um, energy, it, an, actually energy momentum do not form a tensor. Gradient of energy momentum forms tensor. This is precisely so. But traditionally it is called energy momentum tensor. Okay, because immediately though, uh, if you are keen on relativity, you will immediately ask the question, Energy and momentum, they together do not constitute a tensor. Okay, so what is meant is for gradient of the four momentum, say, four momentum. Okay, so that is perfectly okay. Yeah, this is the geodesic equation. This, these are called, see, this is called Christoffel. I, I had occasion to mention it earlier. Christoffel symbol. Christoffel symbol, rather bit complicated, but anyway, uh, I won't go into details. See, basically, well, you go acceleration equal to, there is a contraction here, alpha, beta, gamma, beta and gamma get contracted, so alpha survives, no problem. But what is the meaning of this, I don't know, I mean, it's very, very terribly complicated thing, okay, it is, it comes as it stands from, the, the Riemannian geometry, curved space time. Okay, so we have seen what's meant by a geodesic, and a null geodesic is that special path of light in curved space. Okay, in general, a material particle traverses a geodesic in curved space. Okay, and uh, say uh, as a special case, you have the null geodesic, which is typical of light. Okay, now I will have a brief mention of, so, yeah, brief mention of this bending of light rays, say, around heavy masses, okay. In fact, 
I think I need not explain this because everybody, it is so popular. Say in 1915, Einstein published his paper. In 1919, two groups of uh, astronomers, one group went to Brazil, the other went to South Africa. Okay, the other, the, the African group was headed by Arthur Eddington. Okay, and they independent, they confirmed the prediction of bending of light as predicted by Einstein. Even though it was extremely mild, you know, it's so small. Okay, the, the value was exactly as predicted by Einstein and that made him a world celebrity. Okay, well I have two funny stories. Actually they are not stories. They are not concocted stories. They are, they really happen. Einstein became so popular or a celebrity then in uh, America some taxi driver was just driving his car then lo and behold suddenly Einstein was in front of him the fellow got so much he was so happy and excited that he just dashed against a tree fortunately he, he did not get much injury but that really happened well the fun the next story is still funnier the Chancellor of the Exchequer of England invited Einstein for a dinner to his house. The it's something like the finance minister asking Einstein to come for a dinner. And uh, the moment Einstein ended, that minister's or chancellor of Exchequer's daughter, yes, doctor, she was, she could not believe that the famous celebrity is coming to their house. So <laughs> she fainted. That is what happened. Uh, See, this is not a story, okay, then I won't tell. This is a real thing which happened. That shows the, the celebrity nature of uh, Albert Einstein, particularly with respect to, see, those verifiable consequences, gravitational redshift, okay, when this bending of light beams around, because during a solar eclipse, it can easily be verified. Okay, that's what happened. Because of shortage, I won't go into further details about this, okay, then... Then there is what is called black hole. As I told you, the spectacular consequences of general theory of relativity unfortunately did not happen during the tenure of or during his presence in this world of our world. Einstein passed away in 1955. Okay, in 1960s, the, there was a full blooming of uh, astronomical data say discovery of quasars, pulsars, okay, black, say prediction of black holes, I mean, all those, say all those things came suddenly like neutron star, etc. Okay, and they were, they tell you about the acute consequences of relativity. The very mild, very extremely mild consequences themselves were so glamorous. Okay, in 1919, 19, etc. The other the, the, the acute concentration of, say, masses will, it need not be mass, it could be energy, because energy is nothing but mass, e equal to mc square. So, when, uh, say, there is acute concentration of, say, energy in a space, as in the case of nuclear, say, nuclear, um, uh, within the nucleus of the atom, it is, it's an example, okay, now it so happens that in the case of the sun, see, the, basically 2 gm by r, this is the escape velocity, the familiar, you would have, everybody would have done it in plus 2 classes, escape velocity, where something is permanently, say, permanently snatched away from the gravity of the parent, uh, parent body, okay, if it's, if it is, if V equal to C, okay, then that becomes the, the velocity, okay, the, th that particular, if R goes to such a low value that this is pushed to C, you have, that, that simply means even light finds it difficult to escape, okay, and uh, then that becomes Nothing can escape because even light can't escape from that. Nothing can escape from that. That is called the so-called black hole. This was 
predicted by Carl Schwarzschild, who is famous for the Schwarzschild solution. There is one more variety which uh, is uh, which is called Kerr Kerr K E R R Kerr black hole. This is Schwarzschild black hole with a spherical symmetry, etc. Okay, so this in fact this could be related to gravitational redshift. See, I have left it unexplained even now. Gravitational redshift, okay, or say time runs slow in an acute gravitational field okay see it is simple to understand even special theory of relativity will help you in that you know that if you are in a potential well see like an atom say you find it difficult to, to to ionize this one has to push this much energy one has to give this much energy to ionize that is called ionization energy so say the a gravitational trap, any acute concentration of mass or energy amounts to a gravitational trap or something is, something finds itself in a potential well, okay. So, if it, if it is light, okay, its energy is h cross omega, okay, it finds itself because it has this equal to Even though light has no, no rest mass, it has relativistic mass. M equal to, M C, where M is relativistic mass. M C square root h cross omega or h nu. So, say, this is M C, uh, okay. So, M equal to h cross omega by C square. Because of gravity, you know, this particle, say, having mass M, is attracted towards acute concentration of mass. Usually in everyday parlance we say that light cannot be deflected by any, it cannot be accelerated or retarded or any, because it's so incorrigible it can't be controlled. But in gravity, gravity can, can mend or it can just, it can so called, uh, it, it can control light rays because of acute concentration of mass. So light rays are trapped so its energy is automatically reduced so if if has if it has to escape from this it has to spend the energy from its own pocket okay so when it comes here say the energy is h cross omega minus this potential well say whatever it be you can call it phi so h cross omega minus phi okay is the potential i mean is the energy so if, say, its energy is lowered like this, we say it shifts to the red region. It is called gravitational redshift. Okay? Or it can, as it can be interpreted in a different fashion. Time runs slow in an acute concentration of gravity. Because, see, if it shifts towards the red region means time is slower. Okay? So... This is a very interesting consequence and again even black hole can be explained under the purview of this because if it is such that if the potential is so acute that the entire energy is required, see h cross omega equal to phi, then nothing is left when it comes here. So it's, it just uh, either you say time runs infinitely slow. So it shows an acute redshift means nothing comes out. No energy is available. So that it's an extreme black hole. It's an acute case of gravitational redshift. You can interpret it that way. Okay. Then. Okay. Oh. Then of course, this is a stage where Stephen Hawking takes up from Einstein. The baton is passed now. Say, because Einstein is no more there during the 1960s, then it was the turn of Stephen Hawking and Roger Penrose. Okay? They created, uh, they just uh, proceeded with concepts like uh, the Big Bang, which is an inverse black hole. 
It is just black hole is an implosion. Big Bang is an explosion. Just you can put it the way you like. Okay. Then, well, I think. Uh, um, uh, Okay. I think now uh, for a pre uh, for a lecture of this sort, for a for a popular lecture of this sort, this is enough. Uh, uh, one one can have you can enjoy some photograph of uh, uh, connected with Einstein's life. That is relevant. That is what we are going Ah, sure, sure, sure. Hmm? Or my kid, you must know that. Tolak kat sini pinjam nang itu grip kita korang tu sampai dekat sini. Pinjam yang pon. Eh, ya, ya. Ada urusan fizik sini, ada urusan India, urusan China, apa pernah urusan kosmologi, itu macam apa? Jadi astro fizik sini bandar pertama ini astro fizik sini mana? Mana awal awal? Anda. Kamu sering lihat dia, jadi apa? Yang ni, mana? Profesik tu memang pun naturally. Walau lagi pun sih, kita pernah lihat classical macam yang sila last chapter, mana ini general macam ini. Kadang-kadang classical lah, fully classical, continuous. Ini quantum pun tuh nggak lihat. Quantum mana yang string theory kat atas sila. So ini classical theory dalam last chapter, ini classical macam yang sila orang sila apa? Jadi, mana? Dua orang tu berarti kan itu dia. Nalal dah, nalal dah. Ah, ah, right. Ah, ah, okay, okay. Right. Parents, parents of Albert Einstein, father, mother, Einstein, his sister, Maja, Maja Einstein. Oh, the one important thing is, see, just like Newton was born in the same year as, I mean, the year of Galileo's death. In a similar way, Einstein was born in 1879, the year in which Clerk Maxwell passed away. And remember, that is very, in both cases, it's something like a baton in a relay race, because that Legacy is passed from Galileo to Newton. In a similar way, the legacy is passed from Maxwell to, to Einstein. Because Maxwell, see, in fact, if you, uh, it is said that in the Institute of Advanced Studies in Princeton, where Einstein tw spent 22 years of his life, 1933 to 1955, there were four photographs. One is Isaac Newton, the other is Maxwell, uh, third is it seems Faraday, the fourth is Mahatma Gandhi, Einstein was a mayor of Mahatma Gandhi, that is. Uh, uh, so, the, the professed aim of Maxwell was to put gravity into the same footing as that of electromagnetism. Because at Newton's hands, gravity is, uh, it's not, there is no concept of a field at all, okay? Gravity is an instantaneous thing. The moment I have a mass here that influences it instantaneously as if that field propagates with infinite velocity. But that is uh, uh, certainly not, right? It was Maxwell who first introduced the concept of a field. So from that time onwards, Einstein's professed the aim was to have a theory of gravitation exactly like that of electromagnetism. Okay, uh, that, that's why he, Ma Clerk Maxwell passed away. Okay, 18, it is meaningfully that the baton is passed, the legacy is passed from 
from uh, Maxwell to Einstein. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, that is. Oh, is it? Oh, it looks like Einstein. But Einstein's uncle was guiding guiding him. I don't know. His uncle looks like Einstein. Huh? Rescuing Einstein's compass. It was during the boy's days of Einstein. But Einstein is not like a boy here. I don't know. Uh, it is known that Maxwell's okay. I just our. Uh, in fact, you should remember the paper in 1905. In, in 1905, Einstein published three papers, one on Brownian motion, the other is on special theory of relativity, the third is on uh, photoelectric effect, which fetched him the Nobel Prize. And that paper on relativity, say, is ironically enough, it it's ran like this, on the electrodynamics of moving bodies. See, it tells you that Relativity has as much to do with electrodynamics as it has to do with the mechanics. Okay. Uh, then, okay. In fact, uh, the special theory of relativity established that Einstein uh, say Maxwell's equations are perfectly right. Newton's equation just demands some modification, which, as I told you, it was done dp alpha by dt naught equal to f alpha and that got immediately the famous result e equal to mc square and the fact that energy is nothing but the fourth component of momentum okay uh, okay now let me let me go to you can have you can have almost skip here Michelangelo, ah, right. See, Michelangelo Besso and Marcel Grossman and Einstein. That was Besso and that was Grossman, the famous collaborator of uh, uh, general theory of relativity with Einstein, Marcel Grossman, whom I mentioned. Besso was his best friend. He was uh, always standing by Einstein in his, say, moments of sorrow, moments of bliss everywhere. Okay. Einstein and Mileva Merik. Einstein, say, Mileva Merik was the classmate of Einstein and uh, they, they had a kind of love marriage, okay, but it seems after some 14 years or so that uh, that marriage was wrecked and uh, later he married his own second cousin. Okay, I will tell you. Einstein play. Ah, Einstein is uh, a lover of music. Always used to. In fact, his best hobbies: playing violin, then just canoeing. I mean, rowing in a in a river. Uh, just boating. The simple pleasures of life. And again, he walked a lot. He, in fact, of course, among physicists, you know, the physicist tradition is long walks are meant for physicists. If you go through the biographies of physics people, you will see that oh, two physicists meet, they discuss a lot of, I mean, after a seminar in the evening, they will, hello, come, let us go for a long walk. They will go for 10 kilometers at a stretch. Then, after the discussion, they will have material ready for a paper. Next day, they will publish a paper. It's a prolific creation of uh, uh, physics people. So Einstein was one among them. Of course, the more prolific worker was T. I. M. Dirac, famous for the Dirac equation. Okay. In, in fact, Dirac, uh, Dirac's student got placement somewhere in Tallahassee in Florida. Uh, okay, sir, I got a placement in some such and such a university. Dirac said. I mean, the student said, oh, Dirac said, congratulations, but sir, I didn't, I got the job, but I didn't get any, any accommodation. It's a tough, tough job there to get accommodation. I got it five kilometers away. 
immediate response of Dirac was, oh, so you are doubly lucky. You have got a job and daily 5 plus 5, 10 kilometers of walk daily. You are doubly lucky. That's the sort of attitude of physicists. Okay, Einstein was also like that. He used to walk a lot and he used to row, okay, in a canoe in, in the river Havel in Germany. Okay, so, uh, okay, now come. Analander Physik. Oh, that's that famous journal where Einstein published his paper, Analander Physik. That's a German, uh, uh, yeah, German journal. Ah, like, uh, see the famous prolific creation, okay, like quantum paper. Then PhD thesis on molecular size, Brownian motion, okay. Then comes two more. 4 and 5. Ah, right. Special theory of relativity on the electrodynamics of moving bodies. See, that's the, oh, the, the, the that is, it depend on it. Ah, that is E equal to MC square paper. Yeah. These are the two relativity papers. Okay. Gauss's law, electric field, Gauss's law. Right. Einstein's aim was to create an equation which can be ranked along with Maxwell's equation. His idol was Clerk Maxwell. Ah, ah right, right. Okay. So, this is, these are equations which inspired Maxwell. I sorry, Einstein. Okay. Ah. Okay. equal to H new, oh, that is photoelectric effect. Okay, now let me have an R. Ah, these are the Lorentz transformations which I quoted earlier. Okay. Oh, that is light-like, time-like and uh, space-like. Ah, right. Hermann Minkowski, 1864-1909, he was Einstein's mathematics teacher, okay, and it was Minkowski who put the the special relativity ideas of Einstein into a firm mathematical, say, form, in the form of four vectors. That is Minkowski's creation, Hermann Minkowski, okay. Einstein's heroes, Newton, Maxwell, uh, I don't know, the middle person is Newton, this one is Maxwell, the left, uh, I don't know, is it Faraday, I don't know, Einstein's hero, general relativity, 1915-16, Einstein's equation, ah, right, this is that thing, see, the metric tensor on appearing on the LHS and the, the, the energy momentum tensor appearing on the RSS. Okay. Oh, that is general uh, bending of light beams in a, as verified in a solar, during a solar eclipse. Okay. Eddington, yes, who, that, that, that expedition to South Africa seems to be led by Arthur Eddington. Okay. Uh, yeah, they were they were correlated. They were fully they they just uh, uh, they were uh, they gave coherent coherent result. Essenbos showed that ah that is Einstein's contribution to statistical mechanics. Satyendranath Bos he wrote a paper and sent it to Einstein for verification. Einstein was so much so much impressed by the paper that he took pains to translate that from English to German and published it in Analander Physics. Okay. Ah, right. Here come our big, our heroes. De Broglie, Schrodinger, Heisenberg, Dirac, Max Born, Pauli, Fermi, Bohr, Heisenberg and Pauli, the new generation of golden twenties. Well, that's, that's the story of quantum physics, quantum mechanics. Right. You know that? Niels Bohr. Niels Bohr and uh, Einstein. See, in fact, I would like to have a comment here. There was the, 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 even though Einstein was instrumental in the creation of quantum mechanics, okay, 
he was not at all happy about the quantum aspect. And uh, see, right, he, see, the, the Einstein, Schrodinger, Dirac, and uh, de Broglie, they were opposed to quantum mechanics, even though they were, they were, they also created quantum mechanics, okay. While Heisenberg, Niels Bohr, Pauli, they were the champions of quantum mechanics, okay. And it so happened, there was a long, yeah, Solvay conference, say, starting from 1911, 1915, 1919, 1923, 1927, 1931, okay, six successive, okay, something like our Olympics, every four years there is a Solvay conference, okay, something like Nobel Prize, you know, it was installed by some rich person, okay, and all great scientists assembled here, there was long spell of argument between Einstein and, uh, Einstein and, uh, uh, Niels Bohr, and it seems, see, the only person whom Einstein could not defeat was Niels Bohr, or Niels Bohr was the only person who defeated Einstein, because that philosophical argument, always the winner was Niels Bohr, even though, say, it was, Einstein was instrumental in the creation of quantum mechanics for, because he got Nobel Prize for the photoelectric effect, for the quantum, photon quantum. But he was never happy with that and uh, uh, he was uh, always quarreling with, uh, I mean friendly quarrel, healthy competition between say Niels Bohr and, uh, and Einstein. And Niels Bohr was the winner. There was a famous, of course, you would have heard about EPR paradox, Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen. Podolsky and Rosen were, say, students or postdocs working in the Institute of Advanced Study in Princeton, when I, where Einstein was there. And uh, uh, so Einstein created a typical thought experiment, Gedangen experiment. Einstein was an expert in conjuring typical thought experiments, uh, and that was pitted against, against uh, Niels Bohr, but nothing doing, Niels Bohr just answered it properly. Okay, and uh, even now, I mean, the, the Copernicus, that's usually called the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics, championed by Niels Bohr, Heisenberg, and uh, Pauli. Okay, Hans Albert Einstein, Elsa, ah, that is Einstein's second wife. Einstein's, after they got divorced, Mileva Marika and Einstein got divorced, his second cousin, Elsa Einstein, married him. Okay, that is Elsa. Hans Albert, oh, Hans Albert Einstein, that is son of Einstein. Einstein had two sons, one was a bit mentally retarded or somebody. somebody. The first son, eldest son was a professor of civil engineering in California. Second one was a bit, even though he was so much artistically talented, he was a bit a mental, a mental problem or something. Uh, Hans Albert I don't know whether it is the first son or eldest son or the el younger one, I don't know. Okay. Helen Duca. Oh, that is, see, a secretary who is more famous than the person itself. It is Einstein. She is Einstein's secretary. She was all in all there. Einstein was all praise for her. Helen Duca. Okay. She played a wonderful role. Oh, with open humor. Yes. You know, the fa man famous for the building of the atom bomb in the Manhattan Project, okay? He was uh, Robert Oppenheimer. Incidentally, I would like to tell you that Oppenheimer was well versed in Sanskrit. He was a champion of Bhagavad Gita. Okay? The, the, uh, Erwin, uh, our Erwin Schrodinger was always after Upanishads. I mean, these are very interesting uh, aspects of their personalities because they were very much interested in the Indian philosophy. Okay. Right. Einstein regarded the classical concept of the field the greatest contribution to science. Ah, see. Einstein, that is, he was all praised for Maxwell. Even he praised it, he put Maxwell above Newton. Okay. Because he introduced the concept of a field. His, as I told you, his professed name was to build a theory which is compatible in beauty with Maxwell's equations. Even now if you ask for the most beautiful three equations in physics, one is Maxwell's equations. 
Second is Einstein's field equation, which the, the general that thing, same, which involves a metric tensor. The third is the famous Dirac equation. Yeah, the, these are the most beautiful equations in physics. Okay. Ah, that should be in Princeton. Yeah, 1953, just two years prior to his death. Yeah. Einstein's last death, oh, 18th April. He passed, on, it seems, on 19th. So the last day he was working on finding a unified field theory that combined gravity. Yeah. Oh, I have some comment here. He thought that now that general theory of relativity is completed, he thought, he thought of unifying gravitation with electromagnetism. Okay? And he, from 1919 onwards, up until his death, 1955, he was constantly trying for that. And of course, that was a failure. Nothing could be done. But his aim was, he thought that quantum mechanics may, may emerge as a byproduct of the unification of electromagnetism with the gravitation. But ne that never worked. So, it is uh, a tragic story. His last 32 years, in a certain sense, it was a waste. Waste in a certain sense. Because it could be not create any new universe. Okay. Eh? April 18th, Maria Oh, 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 Okay, it's Okay, now Einstein's contribution. Late quantum and photoelectric effect, determination of molecular size. That was his PhD thesis, molecular size. Explanation of Brownian motion, that's a very important paper. Then special relativity, specific heat of solids, which everybody every MSC student in solid state physics. They uh, do that. Critical of palescence. Oh, then general relativity, then stimulated emission and absorption. Einstein coefficients for stimulated emission, okay, absorption, etc. Okay. Ah, ah, laser, which is, uh, uh, fight, which finds immense application in laser. Ah, right, Einstein got Both Einstein's, that is 1925. Quantum entanglement, oh, that is, yeah, that is connected with that uh, EPR paradox and all that. Unified field theory in 1920-1955, that was a failure, but it was a, it was a noble, no, very noble failure. Okay, Stephen Hawking, oh, that is Einstein's biography, ah, right. Yes, in fact, I just forgot to tell you, uh, where did I keep it? Uh, a bag, ah, right, right, that is... The books which I banked for my talk, references, yes. Yes. I see. Ah, right. That is the, the old, say, Biography of it by Ronald Clark. It's a very beautiful book. Okay, then this is the latest latest one. The the Einstein, his life and universe by Walter Isaacson. I feel everybody should read it. It's so enjoyable. It's a fantastic biography. Subtle is the Lord is the scientific biography of Einstein written by Abraham Pais. That is this book. See, this is that book. Subtle is the Lord. Okay. That is, uh, in fact, that is, it's a biblical, uh, this is just a biblical connotation about the deeper meaning, philosophical meaning. Okay, certainly is the Lord. And Abraham Pais was the colleague of Albert Einstein in the Institute of Advanced Study in Princeton. He was always moving with Einstein, okay, for years together, okay. And so he was, a, he is the most authentic person about Einstein, okay. 
uh, Einstein, ah, Tagore. See, Rabindra Nath Tagore, Einstein. Then that is Einstein with the, oh, Charlie Chaplin. Yes, right, with Chaplin. With Chaplin. <laughs> we do not believe in the God of theology who rewards good and punishes evil. Of course, this is, of course, as far as Einstein's belief, religious belief, is that he said he believes in Spinoza's God. That is who created the grand structure of the universe. But he does not believe in a God who interferes with our daily lives. So he always used to say, I believe in Spinoza's God, who is behind the, the say, the our grand uh, universe. That is, I, that is what is meant by this is Spinoza, Einstein's idol in philosophy. Baruch, you know, death, death philosopher. Right. If a cluttered desk is a sign of an empty desk is a sign. Okay, that is, anyway, you can bypass it. Imagination is more important than knowledge. Okay, that is off quoted uh, statement of Einstein. Oh, okay. So, now I would like to quote, I have one more book which is, which, this is the book on which I have heavily depended for this talk. It is Gravity and Introduction to Einstein's General Relativity. I will just quote it here. Gravity, colon, an introduction to to Einstein's general relativity. Written by James B. Hart. James B. Hartle of the University of California. James B. Hartle is the author, published by Pearson. Okay, this is available in India. This is a very, this is the best book I feel on the formal discussion of relativity, general relativity. And Abraham Pai's book, Subtle is the Lord also, you should read. It is scientific biography in the sense 50% of it is physics. 50% is biographical material. They are interspersed in a very harmonious fashion. It's a very beautiful book. Okay, I think that will do. And of course, personally the best biography is by Walter Isaacson. Okay, which I had, you had it there. Okay, thank you. Dear friends, it's really a privilege and a happy moment for me to express our sincere thanks to Pastor Devan sir. As you may be knowing, he is my teacher and not only for me, Ajit sir, Rajan Nambiar sir, we are all, we are all, uh, we are all students of uh, was it Evan Sal during the MSc and afterwards during MPhil and uh, other programs. And I think uh, especially during this period where the relativity and its proofs have been immensely uh, in uh, public uh, life, a talk like this has been arranged by Shahin Sar and this is uh, very suitable uh, selection as far as the nature of the topic as well as the presenter is 
yeah, who is nothing other than Oscar himself. So I think you might have been uh, an, a desire to be more uh, in his class, to be present more in other classes also. So on behalf of all present here, I express our sincere gratitude to Vasudevan sir for having coming over here and giving a talk in a very simple and uh, especially working out all these steps. Uh, we have prepared things like uh, a regular lecture note and this will be surely useful for us to teach our students these topics in a better way. Thank you very much.